Welcome to another installment of Prophecy Update Radio. I'm your host, Pastor Dave Hart, and I'm delighted to bring to you part four of a five-part series on author Bill Solace's new book, The Next Prophecies. The Next Prophecies is a book that is part two of a projected trilogy that puts a possible chronological order to the prophetic events of the end times. The Next Prophecies is the sequel to the Now Prophecies book. The Next Prophecies will happen soon after the Now Prophecies and the stage is set for their fulfillment. You can acquire any of Bill's books, including this one, at Bill's website at www.prophecydepot.com or simply by going to amazon.com. Some of the next prophecies that are explored in these series that we have been conducting here on Prophecy Update are the Ezekiel 38 Gog of Magog invasion. That was in the part one of this series. And then as we travel through the book and discuss other prophecies that are due to be fulfilled, some of those are the decline of Islam, Allah loses his Akbar, the false covenant that triggers the tribulation period, Christian martyrdom, which is the fifth seal, the two mysterious witnesses of Revelation, the tribulation temple. In this series of radio shows, Bill and I have been showing and exploring and explaining some of those next prophecies. Let's join Bill and myself as we continue our look into his book, The Next Prophecies, here on Prophecy Update. Part of world religion, and we discussed uh, who Death and Hades are of the Fourth Horseman, and we discussed uh, Death and Sheol in Isaiah chapter 28. But how is death and Hades connected to that harlot of mystery Babylon? Yeah, see, this is the the big one because there are two killing campaigns after the rapture. One is the harlot, which I read in Revelation 17, 6, is drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. And then ultimately the Antichrist is also going to be doing martyrdom as well uh, he's actually going to be head, beheading Christians who don't take his mark. So we're told uh, in Revelation 13, verse 15, when the Antichrist is in power, he's granted power to give breath to the image of the beast and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. That's in the false prophet and the Antichrist and that image of Revelation 13. And then remember, that's when it goes on and says, no one can buy or sell unless they take a mark on their right, right. hand or on their forehead. Mm-hmm. So that's the end with the Antichrist's time in the sun, his kingdom. And we're told in Revelation 24, then I saw the souls of those who had been slain had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God that had not worshipped the beast or his image. So we see that that Antichrist is going to be killing believers for not taking his mark. Right. And prior to that, because the harlot world religion comes in first out of the double leg of this man's jeopardy at the end. And she's drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus in Revelation 17, 6. So we, have, we only have two specific killing campaigns, unholy killing crusades, in the end times there. Now, uh, so therefore we say to ourselves, well, who is killing in the, the fifth seal saints? Who's 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 the death in Hades right, that are doing right. this killing? As it says in chapter 12 of your book. Yeah, so, well, it can't be the white horseman, although the Antichrist, the white horseman, will be beheading people. But he's already on the scene and he'll be beheading people for not taking his mark. Right. Death in Hades is killing them for a different reason. Uh, drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. The harlot world religion is killing those who dissent from her counterfeit gospel in Mystery Babylon, Revelation chapter 17. So so what happens after the rapture, you have the first thing that happens is the white horseman comes on the scene. The Antichrist now comes forward as Satan puts forward his point man, 
But the Antichrist, it says, goes to bed with the harlot of Revelation 17. It says that she sits on the beast. The harlot rides the beast, it right. talks about. And in Revelation 17, 7, it says that the beast carries her to her heights. So initially, the Antichrist is in this unholy alliance with the harlot world religion. The harlot world religion is drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. So she is killing believers. So unless death and Hades represents an entirely different entity, and they're the pale horse, not the white horse. The white horse is the Antichrist. He's already on the scene. He will be beheading people in the second half of the tribulation for not taking his mark. Death and Hades is busy killing believers initially. So that's why I put the fifth seal saints as part of their victim. Mm -hmm. um, but we're told in Revelation seventeen sixteen that a time will come when the Antichrist has had enough of the harlot's dominion over the world, and he will have her desolated by the ten kings. Revelation right. seventeen sixteen tells us that. And that happens around the middle of the tribulation. And when that happens, the Antichrist then comes into his time where you shift your attention to Revelation chapter 13. We read that earlier that you can't even buy or sell unless you take his mark upon your right, your right hand or upon the forehead. So we've got to make sure we get the chronology correct. So the reason I say, well, let's, let's put the attention of who's drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus, Mystery Babylon, the harlot world religion, Revelation 17, verse 6, mm -hmm. that likely will be death and Hades who has got authority over a court of the earth to kill. And we find that who they're killing are, you know, believers among who they're right. killing are fifth seal saints. Right. So when we mm -hmm. come to the time of the false covenant, why Israel would go make a, an agreement with death and Hades or death and Sheol in Isaiah 28, is you know it would, it would be as if we were reading Revelation seventeen five and six to say the following, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill, mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth and John says I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her I marvelled with great amazement, but from the Jewish perspective what they want, don't want it to say is. I saw her drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus and the blood of the Jews. See, they don't they don't want to be encapsulated in that right, yeah. scourge. Yeah. So that's that's some of the things I've come up with on the thoughts on that. And it, uh, you talk about in chapter twelve uh, the fifth seal saints, those that are those who are martyred. Why do why do they ask how long, how long, Lord, until they are avenged? Well, that's the you know the. $50 million question, they do ask that. And I say the reason they ask that is because they don't know how much longer. So in other words, use a simple example. A father's taking his kids on a trip to Disneyland, and they're on a road trip. And they're getting closer and closer, but they're not there. And the kids are getting restless in the back seat and say, well, how much longer, Dad, until we get to <laughs> Disneyland, right? Well, right? This is probably a terrible example, but they ask that Dad that question because they don't know. Right? Mm -hmm. So something really bad is going on. People, after the rapture, have put their faith in Jesus Christ. They find themselves now as the fifth seal saints. Right. They don't know how much longer that bad period of time is going to go on. So they say, how much longer until you, holy and true, avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Well, who's killing them? Death and Hades. Who's that? That's probably Mystery Babylon, the harlot world religion. How much longer is that going to go on? But what's interesting is... Here's what the the Lord says to them. And that's where we get this interesting scenario about the three different periods of martyrdom, Christian martyrdom after the rapture. Mm -hmm. It says, Then a white robe was given to each of these fifth seal saints, and it was which represents their salvation. You know, they died for their faith in Jesus Christ, they're saved, they get a white robe, that's representative of that. And it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. So let's unpack what is being said there. Jesus is identifying, he's speaking about three different groups of Christian martyrs after mm -hmm. the rapture. The fifth seal saints who are dying in the gap because they don't know how much longer until the, you know, the tribulation starts. They, they didn't experience the confirmation of the false covenant because if they did, they would realize there are only seven years left from that time when the false covenant was, was confirmed. They, they don't know how much longer. That's why they're asking how long. And, and God says to them, you got to rest a little while because there's going to be others, two other groups that are going to be martyred for their faith. That's the fellow servants of the right. fifth seal saints. 
And then the brethren of the fellow servants are the fifth seal saints. So you got the fifth seal saints, their fellow servants, and their brethren. So what I I say, and I'm speculating, I say the fifth seal saints die in the gap between the rapture and the tribulation. Okay. I say the fellow servants, and, and they're killed by the harlot world religion, mm-hmm. death and Hades, fourth horseman. I say the fellow servants of the fifth seal saints are also killed by the harlot world religion, drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus in the first half of the tribulation. And then at the middle of the tribulation, the ten kings and the Antichrist get rid of the harlot world religion and implement the mark of the beast system. And anyone who does not take the mark would be beheaded. And we find out there are believers, we read in Mm -hmm. Revelation 20, verse 4, that are being beheaded for not taking the mark of the beast. So I I would say that's the brethren. So we have three groups of Christian martyrs killed through two different killing campaigns the harlot and the antichrist the white horseman would be the antichrist the pale horse would be the harlot uh and they're killed during three different periods the time gap the first half of the tribulation and the second half of the tribulation interesting yeah and that leads us to uh, chapter 15 the sixth seal that contains the wrath of the lamb when when does the wrath of god officially start in Enville? Well, definitely the sixth seal is talking about God's wrath. Um, it says, uh, six, 12 through 17, uh, I looked, and when he opened the sixth seal, and it, I'm abbreviating there was some cosmic disturbances, so bad mankind is trying to hide in caves. Mm-hmm. All of mankind, we're talking about the leaders, the rich, the poor, the free, the slave, etc. It's so bad. And says to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, that would be Jesus Christ, for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. So it's it's hard to argue that the tribulation is not underway by the time we get into the sixth seal. Yeah, that's so true. In chapter 16, um, the question is asked, why is the Catholic Church cast into the great tribulation? Is is the Catholic Church the harlot world religion, Bill, do you think? Well, I do believe so. And I think it's important to note that, the, you know, if, if the letter to Thyatira pertains to the Catholic Church, prophetically speaking, and I point out why I believe it does in the book of the next prophecies, they, they get cast into the Great Tribulation. In other words, as an institution, they're left behind. Matter of fact, the Catholic Church Day presently is all millennial. They are not looking for a rapture. Right. If the rapture occurred, they would not be surprised to see that their institution still essentially surviving and intact. And they would argue that that wasn't necessarily the rapture because, you know, I play this out in the book. The scenario would be the fifth seal saints at some point come to put a faith in Jesus Christ after the rapture. We just talked about that. Right. Their process of deduction would be quite simple, probably. Think about them rationally thinking about this. Well, look at millions of people just disappeared. Uh-huh. What was the common denominator? Hello. They believed in Jesus Christ. Did the Bible talk about a time when millions of believers or lots of believers would just disappear without warning, without notice, in the twinkling of an eye? They would find the answer to be yes, First Thessalonians 4 and First Corinthians 15 and elsewhere. Then they would say, well, gee, Jesus Christ must be the Messiah, and they would accept him as their Savior. But meanwhile, they're going to say, well, wait a minute, we've got a harlot world religion here saying they're the one true church, which is what the Catholic Church exactly. believes even presently. Right. And they're going to ask the question, well, if you're the one true church, how come you're still here and didn't disappear in the twinkling of an eye with all those other believers? And they're going to say, why are we to believe that you're the one true church since you've been left behind and didn't get caught up? And so they'll have an answer. The Catholic Church will have an answer. And I don't know what that answer is, but they will have an answer. And so, um, you know, and so when we look at those seven letters to the seven churches in Revelation chapter two and three, they had a prophetic application Um, and. I'll just take a quick minute to find uh, to tell you how that worked out. Okay. Um, there's there's uh, several other questions uh, that arise in in this particular chapter about the Catholic Church. Uh, and when you, you get finished with that, I'll uh, we'll go into those other. I think there's like five or six questions left here. Elaborating more on the Catholic Church being cast into the sickbed of the Great Tribulation. 
uh, there's verses in the letter to Thyatira. There's 12 verses in Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 to 29, to the church of Thyatira. And five of them are devoted to severe condemnation. But these letters have, this letter to Thyatira as well as the other seven letters, the other six letters out of the seven, mm-hmm. had a prophetic application. Um, we talked about that a little bit earlier in the program. There were seven literal churches at the right. time, but there's also a prophetic application that applies to them. And uh, so basically the way this breaks down, we look historically that the prophetic application was the church age manifested itself out through these different periods of time related to these letters to the seven churches. So Ephesus, for instance, was the apostolic period, which is probably around AD 40 to 8150. Mm-hmm. Of course, the church started getting persecuted, uh, which would be Smyrna, the persecuted church, around 100 AD to 312-ish around there. Pergamus, which was sort of the paganization of the church, which happened when the Roman Empire was starting to collapse around AD 300, and goes on through you know, AD 600, probably this Pergamus period. They found it lucrative to, politically expedient to embrace the church uh, as the, you know, the church of the state as right. the empire was collapsing. Constantine in that era. That's right. And then Thyatira would be where the Pergamus morphed into, and that's the Catholic Church, and I'd say probably around 600, but they're going to go into the tribulation. They, they do not have an expiration as those first three churches did. Uh, and then Sardis, refer- the Protestant Reformation, uh, about 1500 AD, mm-hmm. I believe they'll actually part of them will be going into the trib because it says if you know, uh, if you're not you're not watching, you'll be caught off guard like a thief in the night. And that's the letter to the Sardis. Or the, it doesn't say thief in the night, but as a thief. Um, and then Philadelphia is a missionary church, probably 80 1800. They will be raptured. They're kept from the hour of trial. It comes to test those on the earth. We read that earlier. And the Laodicea is that lukewarm apostate church, which I believe is maybe AD 1900. I believe they'll also be going into the church. Jesus says, I will be, I will be vomiting you out of my mouth. Right. It doesn't sound like he'll be fetching you up in the clouds. Those who are in that church that, but amidst all these groups, Thyatira, you know, the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church, Missionary Church, the Laodicean, lukewarm apostate church, anybody who has a true relationship in Jesus Christ presently, that finds themselves in either of those institutions will be caught up. They'll be raptured and they won't go through the tribulation and stuff. But the Catholic Church will, if it's Thyatira, will they need to listen to these words. And here's where the condemnation begins in verses 20 through 24 of Revelation chapter 2. Uh-huh. So nevertheless, I have a few things against you, Catholic Church, because you allow that woman Jezebel the worst Old Testament lady there was, Dave. Ever. Ever. Yeah. (laughs) Who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things, sacrifice to idols. That's spiritual idolatry. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Here's where we get the code word there. I mean, the the, the Mm -hmm. prophecy to be cast into the sick bed of the great tribulation and I will kill her children with death in the great tribulation. Now to, I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, that doctrine of Jezebel, who have not known the depths of Satan, meaning that bad doctrine comes out from Satan himself, infiltrated into the church of Thyatira, as they say, I will put no other burden upon you. So Jezebel there's all kinds of connections between Jezebel and the Queen of Heaven, who right. what the Catholics call mm-hmm. the Virgin Mary, Never. the Blessed Mother, and that's not really Mary. Right. There's right. apparitions. She gave the rosary, you know, <laughs> tells people yes. to pray, pray the rosary, uh, gave 15 promises for those who recite the rosary. You know, basically the belief is that the rosary was delivered by an apparition, Around 1214, this is what Catholic tradition holds, around 1214 uh, to St. Dominic at the Church of Pruy, uh P-R-O-U-I-L-L-E, I didn't pronounce that right. And if you recite the rosary faithfully, 
the apparition says she gives you 15 promises. Now, these are on the Internet. I'm not making these up. And I'm not going to read all 15 of them, but some of the ones that stand out is if you pray, recite the rosary faithfully, the one given by this apparition, which is probably a demon, not right. the real Mar- Mother exactly. Mary of Jesus, um, shall, you, your soul shall not perish. You shall be protected from misfortune. You will be delivered from purgatory, which is a place that doesn't exist, by the right. way. That's not in the Bible. You will have high glory in heaven. You will obtain all that you ask for of Mary. You have aid in time of need. Now listen, a soul that shall not perish, uh, the only person that can do that is Jesus Christ. And there's only one way. That's right. So, you know, I mean, this that's all a facade uh, delivered. and But those are promises that go to, supposedly, that are going to be fulfilled by this apparition. <laughs> My gosh. So, but anyway, the point is, that apparition has made claims that correlate with Jezebel's claims and realities. And so I have a section in the book that compares, like, so for instance, Jezebel called herself a queen. Mm-hmm. The Queen of Heaven is referred to in, in Revelation 18, verse 7, in First Kings, verses 16, 29 through 31. That was when Jezebel called herself a queen. Um, idolatrous, idolatry, we find that in Revelation 2, verses 20. She's talking about, you know, committing idolatry to the Church of Thyatira. First uh, Kings 21, 25 through 26, Jezebel was idolatrous. A harlot, 2 Kings 9, 22, Jezebel. Revelation 17, 1, 5, 19, 2, the harlot, Mystery Babylon, mother abominations uh, of the earth, the harlot world religion, kills the saints. Jezebel killed the saints in 2 Kings 9 through right. 17. Matter of fact, that's 9, 2 Kings 9, verse 7. That's when Elijah was freaked out and fled. Yeah. He didn't want to be killed by Jezebel. Uh, well, who's drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus? Revelation 17, 6. So there's correlations with the harlot world religion. Kills the prophets. First Kings 18, verse 4, Revelation 18, 24, Mystery Babylon, etc. Uh, so she's destroyed, and we find that in Second Kings 9, verses 33 through 37. Jezebel was destroyed, well, Revelation 17, 16, the ten kings take out the right. harlot. So what the, the thing here mm-hmm. says that, but why would God cast the Catholic Church into the sickbed of the Great Tribulation? Well, because they deserve it. Okay, well, why would they deserve it? It sounds horrendous. And why would yeah. he kill their children with death? And Well, it's because she is drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. She deserves the discipline, just like Jezebel got the discipline. So what John was comparing to Jezebel, doctrine that came out from the depths of Satan, mm-hmm. he's comparing her to what they, what this apparition of Mary, in my estimation, the, the Mariology that's going on in the Catholic Church. And he's saying because of that, uh, somehow that's going to perpetrate to the situation where the harlot world religion will actually be drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. Now, this apparition, by the way, Dave, uh, these apparitions of Mary, they have been going on for a long period a of time. A long time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we go back to a point where they're in 1531, even way back when, Guadalupe, Mexico. Uh, 19, 1858, Lords, France. I mean, they, Catholic faithful make pilgrimages by the hundreds of thousands every year, if not the millions, to these sites. Fatima, 1970, Fatima, Portugal. Um, and Zaytun, 1968 through 1970, in Egypt, there was a big one. So, you know, that was even seen by Gamal Nasser, the Egyptian president. Now, the apparition has promised that there'll be more coming. And, uh, as a matter of fact, a quote that... Uh, uh, we get out of the Queen of All book with Jim Tetlow, uh-huh. Roger Oakland, and Brad Myers says, Numerous healings and miracles have been reported at apparition sites around the globe. In addition, the apparition of Blessed Virgin Mary has repeatedly announced that her most significant signs and wonders are yet future. She admits that she has not yet revealed her full glory to the world. She predicts heavenly signs and wonders that the whole world will see. Now, let me let me tell you a quote directly from an apparition and what it says is, this is also in that book by Jim Tetlow and mm-hmm. Brad Myers and Roger Oakland. It says, um, I wish to also tell you that before my apparitions end completely, I shall be seen by every denomination and religion throughout this world. I will be seen among all people, not for just a moment, but everyone shall see me, have a chance to see me as I appeared in Zaytun, Egypt. That was That went on for almost two years. I shall appear again so everyone may see me pray and help my plans to be realized, not just here, but throughout the world. So here's the reason I bring that up. 
after the rapture, if the queen of heaven, this Jezebel of the letter to Thyatira, Uh shows up even just once at a time when the supernatural is the natural, the paranormal is the new normal, and Satan's perpetrating lions, signs and lying wonders, and shows up and says, listen, I'm you know going to uh, convert the world, uh, peace, bring peace to the world, and she's going to point to the Catholic Church. You know, the world's going to be going, oh, my goodness. Yeah. They must be the one true church, right? And uh, so I, I get into the, all the reasons for this and why that's dangerous and how that can... Uh, be enslavement to many of the souls afterwards. Um, so it's just definitely interesting stuff to compare. Oh, man. Such, uh, such deception. Unfortunately, we have ran out of time for another session of Prophecy Update. This has been part four of a five-part series discussing Bill Solace's new book, The Next Prophecies. I'm your host, Dave Hart, and next week we will conclude our discussion regarding Bill's new book, The Next Prophecies. Once again, you can find Bill's book at his website at www.prophecydepot.com, or you can simply go to amazon.com, and you can find it there. Until next week, may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 